Hello everyone, this is Mike Eaton Jr. alongside my father, Mike Sr., coming to you live from Spectrum Entertainment Complex in Wyoming, Michigan. Welcome to the 11th Annual Memorial Day Classic. Dad, you've been part of this tournament for going on 11 years now. What do you think about the tournament, the format, and the types of bowlers you've seen throughout qualifying? Well, it's kind of unique. We, we see our local bowlers that just want to get out there and see if they can get lucky and win a bunch of money. We have some touring players that, when they get a chance, come in that are close by, and everything in between. It's just a real collage of bowlers out here, and it's fun to watch all the different games and all the different styles of play. And it's every year, it's just something a little different that happens, and with the lanes being as tough as they're getting right now, and good job on the pattern, by the way, um, it's very equal for everybody and a lot of fun to watch. The tournament is... Uh there's 11 qualifying squads. Uh, each squad consists of four games. Uh, the high four game total is what gets you into the top 64. Uh, this year it was plus 43 to make it. Um, so yeah, a lot of these guys just did a ton of bowling. Uh, I know a handful of people that did rainbows. They did 11 squads, four games. That's, that's 44 games that they bowled all weekend. So it was it was a grind, it was a tough pattern, and uh, now here we are to match play. Welcome everybody to the final four of the Memorial Day Pla Classic. $10,000 on the line for first place. Right now our four finalists are using their two minutes of warm up. Mike Eaton Jr. here alongside my father, Mike Sr. On 23 and 24, we have Aaron Lorenz bowling Justin Knowles. On 21 and 22, we have Aaron Beaver against Ronnie Sparks. Last few seconds of warm up completing. Once they are wrapped up, the higher seed will get lane choice. All the matches are on fresh. Yeah, moving forward. All the matches are on fresh moving forward. So. Well, Mike, we got four different style games the semis. We got a two-handed high rev lefty bowling a traditional right handle and then the other match is a high rev power player against a pretty much traditional left hand. Yep so pretty diverse diverse field here in the final four which is kind of what our goal was with the pattern this year. We actually used the same pattern as 2019. Uh, in 2019 it took plus 10 to make the top 64. This year it took plus 43. But man, we had we had a ton more bowlers this year. Uh, a lot of talent came to our event this year. It was really exciting. Up on lane 20 run right now is Ronnie Sparks. Beautiful shot by Ronnie. Ronnie's got a great game. He's always been one of my favorite guys to watch. Super clean off his hand. On 23 now, we have Aaron Lorenz. Just, he's a tactician. He can play any part of the lane, straight, hook it. More of a tweener reverie. Goes a little high for the fast eight. Now on 22, we have Aaron Beaver. A little more of a traditional style lefty. Kind of a tweener rev rate. Great shot by Aaron. Unfortunately, he's a seven pin. Watching Ronnie and Aaron, they, they, they attack the lanes differently. Aaron is kind of soft and, and letting the ball hook. And, and Ronnie's trying to play the inside edge of the ball track right. and, and keep the ball inside the pocket most of the way. Yep. And that was pretty typical the whole weekend. Two different style plays out there. Right. Week. Aaron Lorenz is pretty hot right now. He uh, he won the Central uh, Central Regional a couple weeks ago on 36 feet. 
played played together the whole weekend. It was, it was fun to watch. Justin Knowles up on lane 24. Justin, Justin does get out a little bit. There's a great shot. Aaron Bieber up on lane 21. You know, Justin bolts some of our winner spots and, and there are four game sweepers and he bowled 100 under and he, he just kept bowling the winner spots, kept bowling the winner spots until he finally started to figure it out. He made the top four here in 2019, the last time he had we had the event. And when he was struggling, I asked him, I said, Justin, what's, what's the difference, man? You made the top four here in 2019. He says, well, he's always bowled two-handed, but back in 2019, he actually had his thumb in the ball bowling two-handed. And between then and now, he's taken his thumb out and it's changed his axis tilt a little bit. So he's been getting his eyes used to the new shape with the lower axis rotation. Another shot, a little wide. Splits on 23. Ronnie Sparks up on 22. Good off his hand. Great shot. Ronnie's got a very simple, efficient game. I've, there's been very few events I've been to where Ronnie wasn't one of the top top bowlers. Knowles going for the spare here on 23. Almost kicks the pin out to get it, just misses. Ronnie up on 21, looking for a three-bagger. Six seven. Okay, Aaron Lorenz up on twenty four, working on a spare. Wow, I didn't think it was that bad off his hand. Kind of duck hooked on me a little bit. It looked like he jumped on that a little quick on the left leg. Aaron Lorenz up on 23, working on two spares. Great shot by Aaron. Ten back. The last match, Aaron uh, was kind of in a bad spot. And his uh, opponent needed just six pins to move on, and somehow got the Greek church, and Aaron was lucky enough to move on to his semis. Yep. Pretty good break. Yeah, it was against Zach Tackett, and uh, I'm sure everyone, most of everyone knows who Zach is. Great bowler. You know, just sometimes when you get up and eat them, it's uh, easier said than done sometimes. We can all relate. Justin Knowles on 24. Throws his shot. Ooh, trips to seven forward. How do you like that? Aaron Beaver getting ready to throw a shot on lane 21. Looks a little in. Yep. 4-7 through the face. Lucky to get out of there with 8. Justin Knowles stepping back to wipe this ball off. Looks like he's going to let Aaron Beaver shoot the spare. Alright, easy. 
conversion for Aaron on 21. Justin Knowles up on 23, working on a double. <clears throat> Trying to put himself back in the match through four frames here. Is that going to get back? It sure does. Great shot. Ronnie Sparks up on lane 22. Another great shot by Ronnie. Snaps the 10 out. Aaron up on 24, looking for a double. Aaron goes a bit high, leaving the 3 6 10. Ronnie looking for a double on lane 21. Wow, pushes it through. Looks like he missed Anna here. Pushes it through, strikes. Great shot by Ronnie. Aaron Lorenz picks up the 3-6-10. Aaron's clean through four. Justin Knowles has got strike, open, double. Aaron Beaver up on 22. Just a bit high, leaves a six pin. Shot by Aaron on 23, clean off his hand, very nicely done. Justin getting up on 24, he's playing way in today. One of his high qualifying blocks. He was he was bouncing one two. He was right out on the rail. Very versatile. What do you think of the matchups, Dad? Well, it's kind of fun to watch. We got, like I said, we got different style players. We got traditional lefty, kind of up soft hand against power player on the right side. Not power player. We got just the opposite. We got kind of a soft hand on the right against power player on the left. Justin Knowles up on 23, looking for a four bagger. Looks good off his hand. Get up. Uh, this three, six, seven, nine. There's a shot that's easy to do. You roll on that ball a little early and let that elbow go, and that ball just doesn't make that turn and that flood you put down lane for him. Yeah, there's a four load speed bump at the end of the pattern that is not very friendly. Ronnie Sparks up on lane 22, working on a three bagger. Gets a little wide. Ah, uh, leaves the rail. Yeah. It's actually a better miss because if he would have missed a little less, that would have been a washout. At least now he's got a little bit more of a makeable. Unlike Justin. Ah, almost. Look good for a hot second.
Ronnie Sparks up on 22, trying to make his spare conversion on the 1247. The rail. AKA the rail. Picks it. So Ronnie has 101 in the fifth with a spare in the sixth. Aaron has 96 in the fifth with a spare in the sixth. Aaron working on a double, likes it, strikes for a double. Aaron has 79 in the fourth with a double in the fifth and sixth. And Justin has an open in the sixth with 110. Ronnie back up on lane 21, working on a spare. Begins his approach. Off his hand. Does he like it? Straight back, 10, ten pins. Great shot by Ron. Aaron Lorenz up on 23, working on a three bagger. Off his hand. Wow, wow. Gets it back from out there. Spot that you're like that. Yeah, well, Aaron's pretty soft with the hand and the ball speed, so the ball's got a little more time to make that corner. Aaron clearing out some deadwood for us on 21. The shot goes light. Leaves a 3 9. Justin Hall steps up on lane 24 in a must strike situation to stay in the match. Doesn't like it. Almost goes Brooklyn, leaves a 4 7. Aaron Beaver steps up on 22 for the spare. Picks it. He's lucky he's just got to hang in there a little bit because the, our, our ball track is pretty worn and the lanes change pretty fast on the right side. Yes, they do. Light volume front, heavy load speed bump at the end of the pattern. Pick up your spares, stay as close as you can, and you just never know. Justin makes the conversion. Aaron Beaver steps up on 21. Looking for only his, ooh, doesn't like it. Rolls up, strikes. Maybe he shouldn't like it every time, that but. Right, it sure did, didn't it? So what happened there is Aaron missed right, missed left early before the speed bump. The ball picked up just a hair before the speed bump. So was able to get back up the hill. Justin Knowles on 23, work, working on a spare. Looks like he got it in again. Leaves the four pit. Ronnie Sparks up on 22. Off his hand. Leaning into it, snaps the 10 out. Great shot, shot by Mr. Sparks. That's one of the best shots I've seen him throw on 22. It's uh, very good. Justin for the spare conversion on 23, makes it. Justin's struggling a little bit. Just looks like he's not quite comfortable out there. Short at the bottom. Yep. Ronnie up on lane 21, working on a double.
begins his approach, obviously. Ah, too red. Here, light. There's a couple boards right in the front. That ball got right in the hurry. Aaron Lorenz working on a three bagger up in the eighth frame on 24. Oh, trips the seven. Went high, looked like it was going to be a fast eight for a hot second. Four falls and some trips to seven out. Lucky it's just a two. Eight. Yeah, very lucky. Two, eight, and ten, no eight, uh, eight and ten could have very easily been part of that. Shoots the spare. Lorenz up on 23 has a four bagger going into the ninth frame. Oh, two four eight ten trips the ten out at the last second, leaving only the two four eight. Aaron Beaver up on 22, working on a strike. Hits light, just not quite the horsepower needed to get all of them down. Shaker ten. Aaron Lorenz on the spare on 23. Oh boy. Oh boy. No, oh. oh, he just should have missed that, but the pattern, the way it's laid out in our lane topography, that's easy to do. If you don't get it out to the friction, that ball's not working. And you won't miss that right. Well, you know there's hang right. You know they're flat in the middle, so you don't want to miss left, so you give it a little room right, and it just wiggles down lane, doesn't quite get all the way back. Tough spare to shoot. Justin Knowles up in the ninth, can get some pins back here with the strike. Face. Two, four, seven. Aaron up on 21. Spare in the ninth, first ball in the tenth. Right now, Ronnie's up by 16. And Aaron's up by 26. Knows what to spare. Yeah, good spare. Like I said, pick up those spares and stay close and you just never know. Aaron on 21. Ah. Just that same shot again. Just, uh, just shaker 10. Yep. Noel's backing off a little bit, trying to visualize his line. Probably trying to make some kind of adjustment to get himself back in the match. As Aaron Beaver shoots the spare. Aaron Beaver ends up with 194. Good job, picked up all the spares, stayed clean, and keep himself in the match. I bowled this on Friday. Not, I'm not a good bowler anymore, but my goal was to stay less than 200. I just don't have some of those spares out there in the way that, that pattern lays out on our topography. It was pretty tough. Justin Knowles with a great shot here in the 10th. He can sheet for 196. Aaron open in the 9th and has 192. Ronnie on 22. A little light, but carries. Ronnie can get out of the first game with 220, giving him a 26 pin lead going into game two. Justin Knowles up on 23, trying to get a double in the 10th here. Doesn't like it. Wow, what a break, what a break.
Justin just having a hard time committing to the shot. He's kind of yipping it and pulling out of it. Ronnie up on 22. High flush, super high flush carries. Gets the double on the 10th. Ronnie? Ronnie. Yeah. Nose goes high again. Leaves the 278, ends up with 193. Aaron Lorenz gets up on 24. He can fill the 10th with 222. Yeah. yeah, Justin never struck since the fifth frame. Well, except for the double in the 10th, excuse me. Ronnie on the fill ball. Bit high nine pin. He's up with 219, so he's got a 25 pin lead going into game two. Aaron up on 24 for the first shot in the 10th. Looks a little slow. Almost goes Brooklyn, leaves a six pin. Aaron can spare strike to have a 19 pin lead going into game two. This should kind of when we go back and do slow motion on some of this stuff. It looks like some of those misses on that lane on that right lane. Yeah, so, you know, mm -hmm. Starts making commits a little early, that thing gets toward the lane a little bit early. He goes high, gets away with one on lane 21. So 
So first game, Aaron Bieber had 194, Ronnie had 219, 25-10 difference going into game two. Justin Knowles 193, Aaron Lorenz 201, eight pen difference going into game two here. Aaron's only got eight pen. This game. Both Aaron and Justin start off with doubles. Ronnie's working on a three bagger. Looks like these guys might be starting to figure something out. Ronnie up on 22, looking for a three bagger. Just missed it. It looked like he made a little move in and might have found a little bit flatter part of the lane. Justin Knowles up on 23, working on a double. Just gets on it. Wow. Just put in the hammer. Yam City on 23 for the three bagger. Ronnie shooting spear on 22. Converts it. Aaron Lorenz up on 24, working on a three bagger. Stay even in this game and protect his eight pin lead in the match. Ah, trips out to four, seven, nine. It's a great break. Ronnie up on 21. Oh, Aaron Lorenz is wearing a Fitbit. He said he hit 10,000 steps in his third step of his approach. Got a little buzz notification on his wrist there. It's great concentration. Ah, uh, Ronnie goes high again. Missed way in. Missed way in. Looks like he's uh, losing the lane a little bit. And Lorenz up on 23, working on a three bagger, trying to go make it four. Good shot. Great shot. Ring 10. Wow. That one was super crispy, too. Ronnie going for the spare on 21. Goes a little light, leaves the 3 9. Turned out of that shot pretty fast. I thought I went over target, but you keep with that. Justin Knowles up on 24, trying to make it a four bagger. Wow, wow, wow. I got a couple of fish top strikes that yep. puts him in the lead in this turn. Beaver up on lane 21. Uh, Way left on the front on that one. Yeah, he's got some work to do to make up that 25 pin difference. Yep. See what Knowles does here. Yep. It's not a break unless you double, and in the Knowles case, it's not a break unless you throw a five bagger. <laughs> Uh, 
Loren steps up on 23. Had a slim eight pin lead going into this game and that has disappeared. Aaron working on a spare here in the fifth frame. Ah, just yipped it. This went after it early. Leaves a 310. Ronnie up on lane 22. Double spare spare. Stepping up here in the fifth frame. Sets. Takes his first step. Finally. <laughs> Clean off his hand. Uh, uh, Pike watch. Nice shot. Close the rack. Strike. Aaron converts the 310. It's a great spare in this type of situation. Yep. Picks up the 310 and the missiles out of the four. It's a funny game. Got the timer? No, I don't think I have a timer that counts that high. And there we go. Ah. Looks like he found the lane again. Blows the rat. Strike. Gives him a double. Ronnie in a comfortable spot halfway through game two here. Aaron Lorenz up on 23. Great shot. Snaps the 10. Aaron Beaver on 22. Great shot. 10 back. I don't know how to kind of find you where he's playing. I mean. That one's kind of like up the lane. I've seen a couple, two, three, some out to five. So I don't know if he's hit the target that time. Missed Dan. I think he missed Dan. Yeah, dead. Nulls up on 24. Has the first five now in the sixth frame. Jano now has the front six. We're up on 21, looking for a double. Gets it. Neither match over yet, but Noel's in a good spot, Ronnie in a good spot, but still plenty of frames left for things to happen. Stepping up on 23, looking for the front seven. Oh. Nose is getting comfortable now. You can just see the difference. Front seven. Ronnie steps up on 22, working on a double. Stepping up on 24, looking for a double here in the seventh frame. Most strike situation. She has something going, a little pressure on. Ah, waggles the 10. Can't get it to go. I don't know, I think, uh, I think Aaron uh, is in a tough spot. Ronnie Sparks up on 22. Gets a little firm, gets it right. 2 8 10. All that momentum gone. Aaron shoots the 10. Easy single pin conversion for him.
almost picks the 2810. So one of the ways you can shoot that spur, you try and bounce the 2 into the 10 off the wall and hope something bounces back across and takes out the 8. Aaron Lorenz up on 23. Ooh, logs out the 10. Great shot. He says, I'm not done yet. Ronnie up on 21, trying to recover from the open frame in the seventh. there in the eighth for Ronnie Sparks. Justin Knoll steps up on 24, has the first seven strikes this game. Looking to continue the string. Wow. Almost eight tens, Get the, gets the eight out. Leaves a 10. Aaron Bieber up on 22. Ooh, misses way in. Runaway Brooklyn, seven pin. Knows it too, that, that strike there. That, uh, yep, that, that was huge. Jano with the easy single pin conversion. Beaver shooting the seven. Nose can shoot for 79. Lorenz can shoot for 47. I would give Nose the win. Yeah, Justin just needs to stay clean. Good count. Kind of Throw a strike in there somewhere. with a, depending on what Ronnie does in the ninth, a 12 pin lead right now, which is about half of what he needs to make up ground from the first game. Knowles with another shot, starting to get his legs into it. He's getting comfortable. Oh, light mixer carries. Beaver can shoot for 235. Ronnie can shoot for 233. Ronnie carrying a 25 pin lead into this game. That would give uh, be enough for him. Aaron with a big strike in the ninth. Aaron Lorenz is gonna need some help from Justin Knowles to move on. He's got to make this. Oh. I think that's it for Aaron and Justin. I think Justin will be moving on. Ryan needs a spare. Shooting the one, two, four, six, ten. He's got a chance. Oh! Well, if Ronnie sheets, he's 201. If Beaver goes spare strike, he's 215. If Beaver doubles, or gets the first one in the 10th, He's at 220, right? Yeah. 
basically Ronnie needs to fill the tent to make Beaver get the first one. Aaron with 224, giving him 425 for the two games. Mixes him up, gets the first one. Great shot by Ronnie Sparks. You could easily have a tie here with a spare strike. He was 215 and strike nine. Steps up on 21, must strike situation. Does he like it? Looks good. Peered it. Great shot by Ronnie Sparks. Not right there is what separates the men from the boys. Justin Knowles ends up with 259. 452 to Aaron Lorenz's 425. So Justin Knowles, who made it top four here in 2019, now moves on to the finals here in 2021. Isn't it, Dan? Does he have to throw one or is it throw two? <laughs> Gets them all. 201. Ronnie Sparks with 420. So Beaver needs 226 to tie. He's the first two. So he's the first two. Aaron Beaver steps up in the tent with needs a double to win. Gets the first one. This one misses in from the last shot. That's it, folks. Right? 222. That is not enough. Ronnie Sparks advances to the finals. 416 to 420. Only four pins different. We're going to take a quick break here, folks, while we move on to the final match and get our live stream set up and move over to 19 and 20. Hope you're enjoying coverage of the 2021 Memorial Day Classic brought to you by Budweiser. Mike Eaton Jr. along with Mike Eaton Sr. here. We will be back momentarily.
Alright, welcome to the final match of the $10,000 Memorial Day Classic. Our two finalists are taking their two minutes of warm up. Justin Knowles from Okemos, Michigan versus Ronnie Sparks from Redford, Michigan. What was the first year we had this event? Uh, I... Jeez, it's the 11th one. We skipped last year. So it would have been 2010, which means I would have already lived in Cincinnati at the time. So, um, yeah. This is the 11th annual Memorial Day Classic. Obviously, we had to take a hiatus in 2020. This should be a great match. Both these guys know how to strike, especially when there's a lot of money on the line. First place paying $10,000, second place paying $5,000. Justin Knowles was our seventh seed from qualifying, and Ronnie Sparks was 13th. Justin will get choice of lane when they start the match. They are This event sponsored by Budweiser here at Spectrum Lanes in Wyoming, Michigan. Mike Eaton Jr. along with my father, Mike Sr. Getting ready to begin this final match. Justin Knowles stepping up on lane 19. Looks his heel for a little more traction on the slide. Steps up. Gets ready. First shot underway. That goes a little high. Leaving a two pin. warming up he's just warming up out to the left what was he doing he's probably trying to break him in a little bit out there I would think easy spare Ronnie Sparks stepping up on lane 20 Shot by Ronnie, light mixer, carries. This live stream being put together by Parker to Cover Productions. Parker does a great job. Started doing this for us with our Monday Night Skills Challenge we ran. Ronnie Sparks up on lane 19, looking for a double. And they said they couldn't hear me. That's probably a good thing. <laughs> Ronnie with a shot on 19. Great shot, high flush, 10 back. Starts the match off with a double. Justin Knowles getting ready to ball in lane 20. See if he can see if he has an answer for Ronnie's double.
Shot underway. Great shot by Justin. Ten back. Answer number one to Ronnie's double. See if he can come up with answer number two here on 19. Two four seven for Justin. So when he started that the semifinal match, kind of a little tentative, maybe a little nervous, getting on that ball just a little bit early. Justin Old stepping up to shoot the spare. Chops it. Takes the two straight back off the four and seven. Must have stuck on his thumb. Ronnie steps up on lane 20. Has strikes in the first and second frame, looking for a three bagger. Ronnie throws a shot. Great shot, post it, 10 back, textbook. Starting off strong with a three bagger. What do you think of Ronnie's game, Dad? I like his game. I like his hand off the ball at the bottom. I like the fact that he can do that with his thumb in the ball and, and get it done. Stepping up on 19. Looking for a four bagger. This is in a little bit. Looks like he kind of threw that elbow out just a hair at the bottom. Yep, you can see him rehearsing the shot there. He knows it. Leaves a 3 6 10. Yeah, that low volume of the front's not going to let you get away with that like our house shot. on the conversion. Gets it. Good cover. Tell you what, that's a great spare in this kind of situation. I mean, it's a great spare anytime, but when you're bowling for 10 grand, that's not an easy spare. Sarani so with strikes in the first, second, third, and a spare in the fourth. Justin with spare strike open. control here if he wants to keep himself in the in the match here early on. Ronnie is not a guy you want to be trailing by a whole lot of pins. Yeah, cover the spare, stay close, throw the front ends because the right side does change fast. Ah. Oh boy. You know that was high. I didn't think it was four six high.
I'm afraid they'll hear me. So Justin kind of stumbling out of the gates here a little bit. Spare strike, open, open. Just get back on it. That right side changes fast. We'll see how Ronnie handles that going into the second game. Justin, a great player, certainly capable of putting himself back in the match. Sets up on 19. Off he goes. Off his hand. Yeah, very good shot. Great shot. Was that a very ball change? Shot. Couldn't tell you. Yeah. Looked like a ball change. change. Yeah, it was a ball change. Yeah. Different color ball. Yep. I should have known that. Yep. I remember my daughter making, making a mistake between a red and a blue yep. ball. In a final match of a tournament. <laughs> Ronnie Sparks stepping up on 20. Getting set. Double checking that field as he puts his hand in the ball. Visualizing his target line. Off he goes. Another great shot great by shot. Ronnie Sparks. Yeah. It's a really good shot. Ronnie off to a commanding start here in game number one. Two game match, total pins wins. I don't know, Mike. He takes a long time on the approach. At my age, I took that long. I'd probably fall asleep standing there. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I find myself sometimes taking a while too. I'm, you know, just trying to feel right when you step up, making sure you're connecting all the dots before you begin that first yeah. step. Does your hand sweat at all when you ball? Not really. I, I use I use hand conditioner. Give me a little texture. Ronnie's stepping up, trying to double. There it is. Great shot. shot. Just thinking that my popped hand. up a little bit on that shot, but it held. Had a little extra ball speed. It looked like. I was thinking that. I don't know if that lane might be hooking a little bit sooner for Ronnie. Yeah, I agree with you. I think he, he jumped on that pretty quick. He always, that was early. I think he worked hard on keeping his elbow tucked in. Justin stepping up on lane 20. Striking the fifth. Trying to double here in the sixth. <laughs> Wow. Leaves the seven eight. Was that the six he almost left with it? Yep. Was, yep, almost six seven nine. Tough spare here. You have to be exact to pick this. What a great conversion. Yep. It's a good pickup. Justin needs to get something going here. Steps up on lane 19. Great conversion in the sixth. Stepping up in the seventh frame. Needs to start putting the pieces together here fairly quickly. Gets it out a little more room. Ooh, wow. Did he just squash the three, seven, eight? <laughs> Justin just showed everyone his pythons. 
when the tickets go on sale. <laughs> uh, I think the house shot short. Yeah, a little bit, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> Ronnie's stepping up on lane 20. Listen, if you take that long up there, my hand would be split. I'd have to step off and grab my hand again. There it goes. This is right. Leaves the PBA washout. The one, two, four, six, ten. Ronnie left this in his last match and almost picked it. Slid the head pin over to the six, and the six almost got out of the flat gutter to take the ten out, but he did not quite convert it his first time in his last match. Let's see what he can do with this one. Same thing, he actually went at it a different way. Same result. Yeah, well. I mean, it's actually harder to leave the 10 the same way twice in a row, shooting at it two different ways than it would be to convert it twice. That's just two bad breaks on that spare. Ronnie does have some pins to work with. Ronnie's stepping back, taking a little break, regrouping. It's probably a good move on his part. Takes a deep breath, steps up on the approach. Trying to answer that open frame here in the eighth. Gets through that one nicely. 4-9, trips the nine out late, leaving just the four pin. I kind of like that shot. I mean, it looked a little in, but he was super clean off his hand. I thought he might be able to push it through. Didn't quite get there. Comes up a hair high, leaving the four pin. Almost had the nine with it. Gets the break, trips the nine out, leaves just the four. Now working on the single pin spare. Yeah, I just didn't quite get to that point. Just hooked up a couple of feet early on him. Yee. Oh. All right, gets it. So with a strike, Ronnie would have 170 in the eighth. If Justin throws the next couple, he'll have 155 in the eighth. So if Justin can double here, he'd bring the match back within 15 pins. Justin stepping up on 20. Putting some moisture on the heels of his shoes. I think he just needs to stay relaxed and stay down through this shot on the right lane. Yeah, that was a better shot. Yep. Good shot. Great shot. Ten back. Seems to take advantage of those breaks. He yep. got over there against Aaron Lorenz earlier. It's a break on the strike in the seventh. Follows it with a beautiful shot in the eighth. Yep. As they say, it's not a break unless you double. See if Justin can turn it into a three bagger. Stepping up on lane 19. Gets set. Yeah, it's a good shot. Great shot. Very Ten nice. back. 
working hard to put himself back in the match. Yeah, those two shots are way different than the previous shots he's right. been throwing this game. That long to the bottom, beautiful off his hand. Ronnie is, uh, went off on a quick little walk there after his last two frames. A little regroup session. Comes back, grabs the puff ball. Steps up to lane 20. Ball, wipes off the oil. He did that earlier in a match, and somebody thought he was quitting the match and leaving. Well, I don't think Ronnie would ever quit a match. Steps up, double checks his shoe. Gets set. Just setting himself into the shot here. Yeah, it did. I mean, you know, lane, that lane might be getting a little tighter down lane or what, but, you know, PBA washed out the shot before. Blows the rack on that shot. It's hard to see if you made a move from the angle we're sitting at. Yeah. Steps up on 19. Working on a strike going into the tenth. If he strikes out, he shoots two thirty. Off he goes, throws a shot. Stay out. Oh, great. Wow. Trips the nine. Off his hand, it needed to stay out, and it, it, did. it did for him. You can see on that lane, he's looks like he's got a little trick he's doing on that left lane just to push it through the body of the lane there. Yeah. Looks like he's dishing it a hair more on, on 20, which would tell me 20's hooking a little bit more in the front than 19. Looks like he's getting ready to make a little bit of a move left here. Now when he made his moves left, when they started breaking down in his first match, he found himself in a little flatter spot of the lane. See if he's learned from his previous match when he started to have to make some moves. Gets it there. Carried the tag. Great move. Ronnie threw that shot and was walking back saying, great shots, great shots. A little positive self-affirmation work there. I think when he did that, made that move over on the other pair, he kind of moved everything left and got himself in trouble. There, it looked like he just... Yeah. Kind of nudged his feet a little bit and sent it to friction a little soon. Yep. That one worked a lot. That one worked way better for him. You know, way 19 better. and 20 is one of the higher lineage. The whole house is very high lineage here, but 19 and 20 especially. So if you hit the track with the right way here, you might have a little bit more free hook, but that's if you can get it through the fronts. Ronnie stepping up on the fill ball in the 10th. And a little bit. Run away, Brooklyn. Leaves the three. 229 for Ronnie Sparks. Game one. Yeah. Good game. Great game on the fresh. Yeah. Like Ronnie. To work hard to stay ahead here. His, his lanes are changed a little bit on that right yeah. side. Justin's going to be, his lanes are going to stay a little bit more the same. Oh, yeah. 
sends the hat pin in front of the eight. Justin with the spare strike shoots 194. Chasing 37 pins. Tough pattern this weekend. Uh, they must done a little bit on that shot there. A couple yeah. boards in the middle lane. Um, Spares it. So we took, historically we've used the pattern, the rec pattern called, uh, or I'm sorry, it's part of the challenge series from Kaggle called Middle of the Road. And uh, we found that pattern to be very exploitable with urethane, particularly for high rev lefties. So took some oil out of the front put a few small speed bumps in the body of the lane and then one bigger one at the end of the lane. So you're, you're bowling uphill, downhill, uphill, downhill, then a big uphill and downhill at the end of the pad. Yeah. Justin gets nine for 193. And that was our, our topography on the right side. So the pair to pair here is tricky. Because of the speed bumps, the pattern's super speed sensitive. But what I like is our four finalists, we had a, a lower to, to medium rev lefty thumb in. We have a high rev lefty two-hander. On the right side, we had a low to medium rev righty. And we also have more of a kind of a power tweener righty and Ronnie Sparks. And, and we had bowlers with all different kinds of, of styles and rev rates, lefties, righties, one-handers, two-handers, all making match play. Very, very equitable finals. No matter how you bowl, you have to earn it on this pattern. Ronnie, first frame, second game. Ah. See, he moves in and he finds that flatter part of the lane that's not quite broken down yet. Leaves the big four. Obviously not ideal. <laughs> but Ronnie, Ronnie has some pins to work with. 36 pins exactly. Justin Knoll stepping up on 20, frame one, looking to regain, regain some ground here on Ronnie's open frame here in the first. Justin with the great shot, he's getting firm. He's actually kind of lofting it just a hair. Now, I don't know if he's doing that because he's trying to throw it a little harder or if that's actually part of his game plan to help him get it down the lane. Justin stepping up on 19. Looking to start game two with a double. Gives it some room. Lane 19, big strike for Justin Knowles. Starts off with a double. How many of these Ronnie's bowled in? Um, I think he's been here every year since I've been back in town, so... You know, Ronnie went to Wichita State for a minute, bowled on tour for a minute. Now he's stays at home a little more, raising a family. A 
little bit more of a weekend journeyman nowadays. A little soft. Looks like he was a little soft. Goes high. Leaves the three pin. You know, Ronnie ran into this in this last match when he first started moving in. I yeah, start seeing that. Start seeing that. Ball track showing up a little bit, and that ball's catching friction. Why you see that? I think in the next few frames you'll see Ronnie move another zone loft. Yep. Makes the spare. And speed becomes even more of a factor of getting that ball to turn up in the mm -hmm. friction when it sees it. Yep. Ronnie down by 12 currently. And this game was up 36 pins going into this game, which means he now has a 24 pin lead for the match. Ronnie stepping up, kind of has that little arm waggle, getting that feel. To that one nicely. There it is. Great yeah. shot. Big move left on the front. Yep. Yeah, there he is. The yep. You can see Ronnie kind of rehearsing that yo yo motion to help push it down lane. So we'll find out on this one if Justin is doing that on purpose on that right lane. Or? Oh, for the loft? Shots as well. <laughs> they both were off the first one. Yeah, it looks like he kind of bailed out a little. It looks like he was a little quick with his feet. Couldn't quite stay through the shot. So we'll have to wait till the next frame on that one. Well, judging by the fact that he was quick with his feet, you can I, I think he is trying to trying to create some velocity on that right lane. Yeah. I just lost it. Yep. Probably got a little quick with the front, caused him to have to chase it a little bit. Shot here for Justin, considering Ronnie's working on a strike. Yeah, and his move might work on both lanes. Where he's at. Pretty good shot. Tomahawks the 6'10. Comes in light, carries. I think Justin was happy he struck. I'm not sure he was completely happy with the shot itself. I think he had that same little rush in there. Yeah. Like lost it at the bottom a little bit like he did on the right lane. Yep, yep. Here he goes, Ronnie. Moved in. He's in front of the bar return now, just like we thought he would. He gets us when it could be. Great shot about Ronnie. You know, you know and, and, and probably part of the reason Ronnie's here in the final match is when his ball does something weird down lane, he immediately makes a move. I watched all kinds of guys this weekend just fight it, fight it, fight it. Ronnie sees it, he makes the move, makes the shot. Now with a double. It's a great move, it was his own move. Yep.
Ronnie rehearsing his yo-yo motion on the left lane there. Obviously the left lane hooking a little bit earlier. I hope all my deep view kids are watching so they can see that and what we're teaching. And understand the drills we do. Yeah, I understand why they're on their knee doing that at the foul line and one step approaches. Ronnie stepping up on 19. Little arm waggle, little feel waggle. I call it the Wichita Swaggle. Yeah. <laughs> well. All you kids from Wichita do that. Well. Gotta hurry. Gotta hurry. Look at, look at, roll, roll. Yeah. Comes in light, leaves the 10. Yeah. I'm even, I'm even noticing the girls from Wichita starting to do that. Yeah. Stepping up on 19. Shooting his 10 pin. Picks it. Right. See that DU players? That's how you pick up a 10. Yep. That's what you call on this one. Justin Knowles Loft with a. Roll it out. Let's see. It's kind of loft and tight on the right lane and a little bit of a dish rollout on the left lane, isn't he? Yeah. Let's see if he can keep his tempo and stay in the shot here. It's just, it's just stay relaxed and long at the bottom. Yeah. There you go. Yep. There it is. Oh, sends the head pin in front of the 10. Justin up there expressing his dissatisfaction with his carry percentage on that right lane. Yeah, sweet shot. Stepping up now to shoot the 10. Gotta hurry, gets it. I think what happened we put this off for league bowling for a week um well what either our next week? either our open bowling sales would go way up because everyone would come in and practice or our league bowling sales would go way down because everyone would quit ah. just didn't quite get the recovery on that one looks like his ball rolls a hair more forward on that one yeah, sure did yeah. Ball just kind of picked up some early friction and labored on the back a little. Lost that hook potential early in the lane. Flatter roll. Yep. Makes the conversion. I think we got to try it though. I would love to not use a house shot. I think if all bowling centers got together and wanted to bring some integrity back in the game, we'd, you know, don't make them impossible, but at least make make it to where you got a halfway try to strike and not, you know, have 10 boards of area. But Ronnie's stepping up on 20. Uh oh. Oh, gets the break, takes out the, and the, the four, four, seven, ten, leaving just the six. I don't know, almost like the pin chasers back there taking those out. I don't know what. Well, I'm sure Justin doesn't appreciate Ryan's carry percentage on that right lane after seeing that one.
Makes the conversion. <laughs> I'm staying to watch it for a while. Stepping up on 19. Open, spare, double, spare, spare for Ronnie. Sets up. Off he goes. Throws a shot. Gotta go. Brooklyn. I call that playing the rack. Yeah, well. Throw something off that rack, that will go better if you get the other side. I think both guys are encountering some transition. It's uh, creating a little bit of an issue with their shot and tension, and we're getting a little. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Not, not easy. This pattern is very challenging. Have a lot of money on the line. Oh boy. And he is <laughs> he is just naked on that right lane. Yeah. Wiggles the five on a Brooklyn shot. Ronnie just carried a Brooklyn on the left lane. I was wondering if he got his thumb stuck. No, I, I don't know. <laughs> he is not having fun on that right lane. Spares it. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know a round of drinks. Justin up by 10. Still down 26 in the match. Now, let's see if he can just thumb off this time and throw a good shot. Sets up. Off he goes. Pretty good shot. Looks good. Strike. Pretty good shot. Great shot by Justin Knowles on lane 19. You just can't throw the ball like that on the right line. Ronnie stepping up here in the eighth, striking the seventh, looking to double. Looks like he's making another move. Now way in front of the bar return. There it is, nice great shot. shot. Take advantage of the one. Was it that did the three out in the tenth frame earlier? Uh, I don't want to say. So what did he do? Stepped in front of the bar return? Or well, I didn't see the I didn't see the whole game, but I don't know if if he was playing there most of the game or not, or if he made that move in the tenth. But he was actually on the other side of the bar return and just air 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 mailed it right. Got three off the right. Goes to shoot the spare. Misses left and gets a zero for three out. That like was this. that was Ronnie's match in the round of 16, I believe. 
Does he so, even have it on their cell phone? I'd like no, to see that. Yeah, no, you don't. <laughs> A little firm, a little aggression, doubles. Great shot by Ronnie Sparks in the ninth. Both players can strike out for 236. Considering Justin's trailing by 36 going into this match, I'm not sure there's much Justin can do at this point. Well, they should have struck in the seventh on this one. A really good shot. Now well, that one's up and down. So. Yeah, match is over. Yeah. This right lane got into Justin's head a little bit. A few bad breaks. On his head because he definitely was throwing the ball different on that lane. Shamar angle. Did not get through the bottom clean on those on the right lane of that, yeah. that one shot there that we saw. Justin with the spare in the ninth. On pace for 2 0. better on the, on the sport patterns that you guys put on the challenge series and he says anytime what do you think oh i'm ready he didn't want to bowl today so i can understand he had a long drive home so we got to get the the monday maniacs against the tuesday troopers at some point Love Michael. Came out cold. Loved having him here in town. Haven't seen him in a while. It's good to catch up. Justin with 393. Right, so. 386. Back your lunch. There you go. Michael needs to practice. He hasn't been bowling. I've been bowling a lot. Great shot by Ronnie there. So Parker brought his hoverboard. I, I let both participants know that whoever won had to take a victory lap on the hoverboard. Now that looked like one of my shots Friday. Yeah, and it looked like all your shots on Friday. Easy. <laughs> Pocket ones. Not bad for four games. Not bad. All right, Ronnie. Great game. 221. Ronnie Sparks 450. Justin Knowles 386. Ronnie Sparks are 2021 $10,000 Memorial Day championship champion. Congratulations, Ronnie Sparks. Great job, Justin Knowles. Great what ball. a great event we had. 701 total combined bowlers from squad to squad. 701. Absolute incredible turnout. Everything ran smooth. Had a lot of great help, great staff. What a great event. Yeah, I'd like to thank uh, Budweiser and Westside, they, they became a sponsor back in the mid-90s when we hosted the PBA tournaments, and 
Once we stopped that in 2006, they continued to sponsor us locally and keep this event alive. This has been a huge, yes. huge event over the years and the best ever. Great job, yep. Mike. Thank Great you. Great job. Thank you. Well, I'm sure we have some post-match interviews coming up, and uh, so stay tuned. So congratulations. Congratulations yeah. once again, Ronnie Sparks. Congratulations to both. Runner-up, Ronnie Sparks. Well, this is Jeff Cover. We're coming to you live from Spectrum Entertainment Complex in Wyoming, Michigan. This is the end of the 11th annual Memorial Day Classic here at Spectrum Lanes. We're, beside me is the tournament champion, Ronnie Sparks, who's won this tournament for the second time. To his left is Justin Knowles with a great tournament, finishing second. The final score was 450 to 386. Ronnie, uh, what was your game plan coming into the final match from everything that happened earlier in the day, and uh, what were you using out there? Um, I brought all 12 balls to every pair because I had no clue which one I was going to be using. Um, but I ended up using my IQ Tour just to try to play a little bit straighter. Um, the middles, the lanes got really hard in the middle part of the lane, so I tried to avoid being in there so soon, but you kind of still had to get there, so I just kind of made some power shots and then just kind of used my touch going into the second game. So during that second game, you know, you're, you're up 36, and definitely match is not over, especially with a great competitor in Justin. Uh, what was going through your mind during that, uh, that last part of that second match? Um, the transition was doing the same thing. Like the second game has been the tr same transition. You get so far left, you start getting into the other side's flat. So it makes it really hard to clear it. And then you know you have the little fall off to the right. So I was just trying to find a way um, to get the ball to get through the lane without it going too far right. And at first I thought I could do a rotation and it just got a little too sporadic. So I realized I probably should bring up my speed. So I kind of started a little more projection, a little more speed to kind of help the ball get through. Get well, it worked. Congratulations. Uh, $10,000. What are you going to do with the money? Who knows? You know, um, probably just put some away and then just take the kids on a little trip. I got Vegas and Nationals coming up soon. So probably uh, link up with Kirk, drill a couple more bowling balls and uh, keep, the, keep the train rolling. Sounds good to me. All right, Justin, yep. great finish, second place. Um, Notice you used some reactives today. Yeah. Uh, had to pull them out, it seemed like. Uh, what were your thoughts going in, and um, what were what equipment did you end up pulling out for today? Uh, I threw a storm trend for most of the day. Uh, they felt a little crispier, a little flatter. The urethane was definitely out of play. So uh, my goal was just to get right. I had lefties in the first couple rounds, so I wanted to be right of them. That way they had no hold. So it was kind of that was my game plan, take away their hold, and... Uh, create as much angle as I could without it falling off the cliff. Um, just had enough time to blend it the first game, the first match, and then the second match, not so much. Just had to make some really good shots. Wait for game two when it finally blended out, and then I could uh, go there. Mm -hmm. But uh, last match, trend was too quick. Um, had to go to something a little more blendy. I just waited a little too long, a little bit of ego, a little bit of trusting the ball too much. So uh, made the change finally through some good shots, but... Uh, that's, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Well, over 200 bowlers bowling. Yeah. The cream came to the top for the final match. Uh, two of the most outstanding bowlers in the state of Michigan that we have. Uh, just throwing it out there, you guys have probably bowled each other in head-to-head -head matches throughout the years. Uh, who's leading in the head-to-head -head matches now? I'm not too sure, but I know the, uh, the last one I lost by five, and that was, uh, that was really on the top of my memory. Yeah, so. But, yeah, so who, know, who knows, man? I think it's real. Yeah, it's real close. Edge, yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's real close. Right. So, All right. Well, thank you again. This has been the 11th Annual Memorial Day Classic presented by Spectrum Entertainment Complex. Check out sec300.com. Also, parkerdecoverproductions.com. Thank you guys once again. What a great tournament by the Eaton family. And uh, best of luck in the, in the future.